Tamil Nadu will have its own flying school very soon. In fact, I haven't met two pilots, Jonathan and Selroy, who are reviving an old World War time airstrip in the Sivaganga district of Tamil Nadu. So, Jonathan, you're reviving an old World War time airstrip. Tell me about that. Yeah. So, this is based between Trichy and Madurai. Uh, so, it comes under Chetty Nadu. And uh, this is owned by the Tamil Nadu government. Uh, so we want to revive that particular airfield. So it is owned by the government of Tamil Nadu itself. And uh, we would love to start operations from there. And Chetinad is another place which we can actually market to the world because it has such historic significance. And coming from Tamil Nadu, we'll definitely want to see that happen. It's a kind of a jackpot for you? Absolutely, yes, definitely. Um, it's a clean slate for us to start off with. Um, there are currently no aviation activities being conducted out of that airfield and we would be the first operators over there. Uh, what it means for us is there will be relatively low air traffic in that area. So our students who will be new to flight training, they'll be able to learn in, a, uh, in an environment that's not so congested. So they'll be able to focus on their lessons. Uh, when do you think you'll be able to kickstart this? Uh, we are looking to kickstart this uh, January 2023, uh, based on all regulatory approvals that we can get as soon as possible. And you are reviving a World War Time airstrip, is it? Will that be enough for your flying school? Absolutely. Uh, with the help and support of the government, uh, I think it will be possible very soon. How much of space you're getting? Um, I'll have to look into the detail further. Uh, it in involves uh, two runways, um, and these will be more than sufficient for our operation. Right. You're already running a flying school in New Zealand. Uh, what makes you come to India now? One is the call of Make in India. One is wanting to give back to our country because we went, when we went to New Zealand, we knew the standards were good. But after going there and then after training to be commercial pilots in New Zealand, what we, wanted to, what we did in New Zealand was raise the standard in New Zealand of the flight training industry. Uh, so there's so many things that we've done first in New Zealand's flight training industry now. So we want to bring that standard which we have achieved in New Zealand to India and raise the overall uh, standard of uh, India as well. But this would mean how many flights uh, for training for you here? Um, what we've achieved in New Zealand is uh, with the same number of aeroplanes that other flying schools over there use. We use about one third of those aeroplanes um, because our aeroplanes are brand new, they're state of the art, modern and require very low maintenance and are also very fuel efficient so they're very green. Our intention is to replicate that model over here in India as well uh, by introducing brand new state-of-the-art aeroplanes and uh, initially we will start off with uh, three aeroplanes growing to a fleet of 10 very quickly after that. Cost-wise for students or trainees here? Sorry? Cost? The cost of the training would be comparable with what's available in the Indian market so we'll price ourselves really well, uh, we'll be very competitive. Yeah. Is there still scope for pilots in India? Many airlines are not doing that well. Uh, no, the, if you actually look at the aviation sector, is the one which actually gets affected during a pandemic or a global meltdown. But it's the industry which quickly bounces back really fast, uh, where we take off really well. Mm -hmm. And so with uh, the sector, we know that it's taken off now. If you look at uh, the sector right now, all uh, airlines are going on full capacity. And they are, have started uh, bringing in pilots, so we are sure uh, the requirements are much higher. And even if you look at the DGCS website, if you look at the statistics by aircraft manufacturers, you'll find that India would need at least uh, 40,000 pilots mm -hmm. in the next 18 years. So it's a very good time because once you hit rock bottom, the only way is to go up. So best time to train. Lastly, Chennai had a flying school earlier. Do you think uh, location-wise, is it a good idea to have it down south? Yes, absolutely. I, I would say Chennai being an international airport, um, the flying schools uh, based at Chennai have met the same fate as flying schools around the world, which are based in big cities. Um, over a period of time, international commercial traffic does take priority. So setting up at an airfield away from uh, one of the bigger centers would be good for the flight training industry and for us as well. I'd just like to add what Jonathan also mentioned earlier in regards with uh, the timing of setting up the flying school. I think uh, the government of India has taken some very good steps, especially under the Udan scheme, um, connecting tier 2 and tier 3 cities. And this creates uh, a much larger aviation demand. 
uh, aviation markets in most of the world's countries are saturated, but India is just scratching or is just uh, looking at the tip of the iceberg at this stage. There's a lot more that can be done in the aviation sector and a lot more growth to be witnessed, connecting smaller towns and cities. Thank you very much for your time. All the best. And many compare them to the Wright brothers on a lighter note. Very soon, Tamil Nadu will have its own new flying school reviving an old World War time airstrip. In Chennai with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Findy TV.